fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high old silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeat to the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I'm Silver. In the headquarters building at Fort Davis, which was some distance south of Frontier Town, young Lieutenant Nelson looked up from the desk as a corporal entered. Well, Corporal, what is it? Lieutenant Little Bear, son of Chief Blackhawk, has come to talk to you. I won't talk to him. My order for Chief Blackhawk and his tribe to leave that valley still stands. I'm begging your pardon, sir, but you really ought to see Little Bear. Don't try to tell me how to run this fort. Now get out. And... Now wait a minute. Well, sir. I can't miss a good chance like this. Chief Blackhawk won't dare make trouble now. I don't understand, sir. What Order is... the guard to place Little Bear under arrest. But, Lieutenant... Do as I say. We'll hold Little Bear as hostage until those Indians move out of the valley as I ordered them to do. Now go give the order for Little Bear's arrest. Yes, sir. A few days later, Tonto, Indian companion of the Lone Ranger, returned to their secret camp in the Enchanted Hills, northeast of Frontier Town. He had gone into town for supplies that morning, and it was past noon when he reined up at the camp. Oh, Scott, oh, fella. Oh, fella. Oh. You got back in a hurry, Tonto. Ah. Me get letter at post office for Lone Ranger. Oh, letter for me? Ah. You see it. Oh. This is a note from the Padre asking that we come to the mission as soon as possible. Oh. Padre have important news, maybe. Yes, he never sends for us unless it is important. We'll leave right now. The supplies you have in your saddlebags will be sufficient for the trip. Here, Silver. We ought to arrive at the mission by tomorrow afternoon if we ride all night. Uh-huh. Not right. Easy, big fellow, easy. Uh-huh. One silver. The month's come. It was late the following afternoon when the Lone Ranger and Tonto arrived at the mission. After they had greeted the Padre and had entered the main room of the mission, the Padre immediately discussed the reason for sending the letter. I used the mail to reach you, my friend, instead of getting in touch with you through our Indian friends, because I didn't want anyone, not even the Indians, to know you were coming here. I see, Father. Your reason for having us come here must be a very important one, Padre. It is most important. We left camp the minute I received your note. I knew you would. Oh, what's the trouble, sir? The Indians are preparing for an uprising. Oh, 
That not good? Are you sure, Padre? Black Hawk has never caused trouble. Just and he... a moment, my friend. Yes. I know positively that Black Hawk has already gathered almost a thousand braves and has plenty of weapons and ammunition. In that case, the garrison at Fort Davis must be notified at once. Ah, the root of all the trouble is there at Fort Davis, my son. What do you mean? The usual commander, Captain Bailey, has left for Fort Worth. He left a young lieutenant in command, Lieutenant Nelson, who has a force of only 50 men there with him. I see. Go on, sir. Lieutenant Nelson is new to the West. He's stubborn, headstrong, and he looks upon the Indians as ignorant savages to be dealt with as one would deal with coyotes. Then he's to blame for the Indian's sudden change of attitude? See, Lieutenant Nelson ordered Black Hawk and his tribe to leave the valley where they've lived for many years. Black Hawk sent his own son to the fort to talk to the lieutenant. They came to no agreement? Not only that, my friend, but Lieutenant Nelson had the chief's son, Little Bear, taken prisoner to be held as hostage against any further trouble. He couldn't have made a worse move. Exactly. In retaliation... Black Hawk has called together the braves from all the nearby tribes. And within the next 24 hours, they will go on the warpath against the fort and the surrounding settlement. Nelson's foolish actions will mean the death of the settlers, the downfall of Fort Davis. Fifty soldiers can't hold out against a thousand well-armed Indians. See, si, I know. That's why I sent for you, my son. There must be something you can do to prevent this awful happening. The only thing I can think of right now is to go to Nelson and get Little Bear's release. Then I'll try to make the man see reason. You're the only person I know who might succeed in showing the young lieutenant his mistakes before it's too late. Todd and I'll leave for Fort Davis right now. It isn't far, and we can reach there before sundown. That's right. I pray that you'll be successful in your mission. If not, the result may be uprisings in other parts of the territory and much bloodshed. We haven't much time, Padre. But we'll do everything we can. Come along, Todd. It was almost dusk when a soldier entered the commander's headquarters at Fort Davis. What is it, Sergeant? Sir, a masked man and an Indian are outside. What? The masked man asked to see you, sir. He knew your name. I told you men to shoot down every Indian on sight. Why do you let now, this... please, one... sir, this Indian is a friend of the man in the mask. I was told to give you this, sir. Hmm. Silver bullet. That means nothing to me. But it does to me, sir. The masked man who carries the silver bullets is a friend to Captain Bailey, sir. He came here quite often. If he's a friend, why does he wear a mask? I don't really know, sir. But Captain Bailey gave us orders to disregard his mask and to bring him in whenever he came to the fort. Hmm. It's almighty peculiar. But you might as well send him in. Yes, sir. The lieutenant will see you, sir. Come in. Thanks, Good evening, Lieutenant. Well, who are you? What do you want? I'm a friend of Captain Bailey's. I came to talk to you since he's not here. I'm not used to talking to masked men, sir. I wear this mask for reasons of my own. Reasons which Captain Bailey understands, Lieutenant. Well, sit down. Get to the point, sir. Thanks. <sighs> Lieutenant, I understand you've taken Little Bear prisoner. What of it? I'm running this fort in the captain's absence. Unfortunately, that's true, sir. Just what do you mean by that? I mean, Lieutenant Nelson, that within a short period of time, you've undone all the good that Captain Bailey has done here in this territory. How dare you come I here I suggest and... you sit down and calm yourself, Lieutenant. I came here with vital information and to help, if possible. I'm a fool to listen to you, sir, but... Well, I'm curious to know just what did bring you here. Go on. Thank you. I understand Little Bear came here representing his father, Chief Blackhawk. Well, what if he did? His position was the same as that of a foreign emissary sent to our government. Seizure of such a person might mean war between nations. Ah, Tommy Rot. Little Bear is nothing but a savage. I'll teach that Blackhawk a lesson if I have to wipe out his entire tribe. If they don't wipe you out first, Lieutenant. What do you mean by that? I mean that Blackhawk now has almost a thousand well-armed braves ready to raid this fort and settlement within the next 24 hours. Really? Let him come. My 50 well-trained soldiers will mow him down like sheep. You underrate the intelligence of Chief Blackhawk, Lieutenant. We've pampered those simple savages long enough. Better men than you have come out here with ideas like that. But they soon change their minds. Don't try to tell me how to run this fort. While I'm in command here, I'll do things my way. I see. 
Frankly, Lieutenant Nelson, in my opinion, you're an obstinate young fool, what? entirely without experience or foresight. That's enough from you, mister. Sergeant, come in here. Yes, sir. Sergeant, put this meddling masked man under arrest for insulting an officer. But, Lieutenant... Do as I say. Oh, wait a minute. Now he draws his guns on us. Arrest him at once, sir. Sorry, sir, but he's got the drop on us. Since I'm not one of the men under your command, Lieutenant, your charge doesn't hold water. And if the truth is insulting to you, you'll have to take it anyway. Drop your guns on the floor, both of you. Yes, sir. This is outrageous. If you think... I said drop your gun. You'll hear about this... Now, Sergeant, move over here behind the desk. Yes, sir. You're mad. You're absolutely insane. Quiet. You're coming along with me, Lieutenant. Sergeant, call for the guards. The first one who makes a sound might get hurt. You'll hang for this. Maybe. Sergeant, where's the Lieutenant's horse? Right outside, sir. You'll be in command here until the Lieutenant returns. Have your men notify the settlers to move into the stockade at once. Then be prepared for an Indian attack in case we can't forestall it. Yes, sir. Listen here, Sergeant. You you come with me and get moving. Uh, uh... The lieutenant has a few things to learn, Tonto. We're going to teach them to him. Get on your horse, lieutenant, and make sure you don't call anyone's attention to the fact that I'm holding a gun on you, or it might go off. You'll be sorry for this. You'll ride between us, easy, steady, big fellow. Come on, Silver. Get out. Get out. The Lone Ranger and Tonto, with Lieutenant Nelson between them, rode from the fort without interference. They went into the hills and made a temporary camp. While the masked man and the Indian prepared and ate supper, the lieutenant sat, sullen and watchful, refusing to eat. After the others had finished eating, he spoke. Just what do you hope to gain by kidnapping a United States Army officer, mister? I hope to show you how wrong you've been and to make you worthy to be an officer. There's nothing anyone could ever learn from a masked man. That depends. You know, I have a sneaking suspicion that underneath it all... You're more of a real man than you've shown yourself to be so far. Get to the point. Why have you done this? I intend to have you meet with Black Hawk, so that you may arrange this matter on peaceful terms before it's too late. So that's it. Black Hawk sent you to capture me. Those savages will burn me at the stake because I held Little Bear prisoner. Black Hawk didn't send me to you. Your refusal to listen to reason and your attempt to hold me at the fort resulted in your being here. Otto. Uh. I'm leaving for a visit to Black Hawk. The lieutenant will stay here with you until I get back. Uh, me watch him. You won't be tied, lieutenant, but Tonto will be guarding you very closely. Here, Silver. I won't be gone too long, Tonto. Steady, easy, big fella. Adios. One Silver! Time passed. And as the full moon moved across the sky, Tonto and the lieutenant waited for the Lone Ranger's return. Then Lieutenant Nelson lay down and closed his eyes as if asleep, but his mind worked fast with plans of escape. It was a short time later when he began to moan. Oh. Oh. Why? Why you make sound like that? I, I'm sick. Terribly sick. Oh. Oh. Why you have boots off? My boots were tight. I took them off. Give me water, please. Water. Oh. 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 You look like him faint. Let me give him water from the canteen. As Tonto bent toward Nelson with the water canteen, the soldier, in a sudden move, grabbed one of the boots which lay beside him and swung. The sharp heel of the boot struck Tonto heavily in the temple. Tonto fell, momentarily stunned. Nelson sprang up and swung the boot again, catching the Indian on the back of the head. Then, putting on his boots, he ran to his horse. Steady there. You and I are going to the fort. We'll come back with some men and get that masked man once and for all. Easy. Get up there. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. Taking Toto by surprise by pretending illness, Lieutenant Nelson struck the Indian down. Then the officer started for the fort to get soldiers and to return to capture the Lone Ranger. Meantime, the Lone Ranger rode to Black Hawk's village. He was known and respected by Black Hawk's braves and was immediately taken to the chief. Chief Black Hawk's features were stern and forbidding as he listened to what the masked man had to say. My friend, the great chief Black Hawk, allows his braves to beat the drums of war. Hmm. Soldier of Pale Face, tell Black Hawk, leave village of ancestor. Black Hawk, not leave. Send Little Bear, son of Black Hawk, to have Pow Wow at fort. That make prisoner of Little Bear. I know what's happened, Chief Black Hawk. I have come to talk wisdom to you. Black Hawk always find word of mass man full of wisdom. Hey, listen. Good. The great Captain Bailey, your friend and mine, is not at the fort. The officer in charge, Lieutenant Nelson, has acted unwisely. He is now ready to meet Black Hawk for a powwow at my camp. So bring some of your braves and come with me to meet him. Black Hawk not have talk with pale face officer. Indian go to fort, kill men. Bring back, little bear. But that is not wise, Chief Black Hawk. The great white father will send many soldiers. They will hunt for Black Hawk and his braves. They will avenge the killings. Lieutenant Nelson is young and lacking in wisdom. Come, talk to him. He will give back little bear unharmed. He will let the Indians stay in their village. This man of silver bullet not have forked tongue. Him speak word of wisdom. Black Hawk, listen. Black Hawk, come for powwow with pale face officer. We go now. Olaute! Within a short time, the Lone Ranger, with Black Hawk and a few braves, left the Indian village and started for the camp where he had left Tonto with Lieutenant Nelson. When they reached the camp, Tonto, who had lain unconscious for some time, was just struggling to his feet. Tonto! It's not good, Kim Asabi. Lieutenant Nelson make believe him sick. Me try help him. Him hit me with boot. Me, just come to. Your head, how is it, Toto? I'd better see. No, no, me all right now, Kimisabi. Pale face, you want powwow gone? Chief Black Hawk, you heard what Toto said. Uh, he didn't... Kimisabi, somebody come. Seems to be several horsemen, Toto. We better find out. We have been betrayed. No, you don't, know. Nelson. Oh, got them all down. Got them down. Hold your fire, men. Thanks, Sergeant. Chief Blackhawk, this is all a mistake. We go. I... Chief Blackhawk, not listen now. Oh, go, who's that? You'll regret this, mister. As for you, Sergeant, you'll be court martialed. I'm sorry I had to wound you in the arm, Lieutenant. But if you'd killed Blackhawk, you and your men would have been massacred. And the Indians would go on the warpath all over the territory. That's right. As it is, you spoiled any chances of a peaceful compromise with Blackhawk. It's certain now that he and his men will attack the fort. Perhaps, perhaps I acted too hastily. I, I'm sorry about it now. At least you've come to your senses. Toto, get uh, some water and we'll bind up the lieutenant's wound. Uh, let me get one. That's kind of you, sir. Not at all. The situation is serious. With a thousand Indians against us, we can't hold out. Everybody in the garrison will be massacred. Maybe it's not too late. Did you warn all the settlers to go into the stockade? Yes, sir. They've all been warned, and most of them have gone to the fort. Good. Here, here, water. Ben. Thanks, Toto. All right, we'll fix your arm now, Lieutenant. Take it easy. This won't take more than a moment. Oh. Rinse it off some. Oh, it's just a flesh wound. It'll soon be all right. Have you thought of a plan? Nothing definite. Now hold still. Easy. Toto, uh-huh. you can ride to Frontier Town and wait there for Captain Bailey. Uh-huh. Tell him what's happened. Have him and his men ride to the fort on the double. Steady now. One more turn, I'll tie it. There. That will do till we get to the fort. Thanks. If the captain could get here in time, it would help. Of course, when he hears what I've done, I guess it'll mean the end of my career in the Army. Perhaps not, Lieutenant. We'll wait until he does arrive before we think about that. 
All right, get going, Tonto, and don't waste any time. He ride plenty fast to Frontier Town, King Masabi. Easy, Scott, easy, fellow. Get him off, Scout. Now we'll ride to the fort, Lieutenant. We'll have to hurry. There's no time to lose. <laughs> It was almost dawn when the Lone Ranger sat in the lieutenant's quarters discussing a plan with Nelson and the sergeant. Because of what's happened, I feel certain the Indians will attack at dawn. It's all my fault. I guess I... I think you've learned your lesson, Lieutenant. Oh, did you order the guard to bring Little Bear here? Yes, they'll be here any minute. Good. I've uh, prepared that paper on your desk there. It's sort of a treaty written in Indian symbols, letting them stay in the valley. What do you want me to do? I want you to sign it in the presence of Little Bear. Then we'll have him sign it for his father. I brought the Indian, sir. How? Tie, little bear. Ah, it could. You a masked man of silver bullet. Your father, Chief Blackhawk, is angry, little bear. He thinks that I, his friend, betrayed him. But it is not so. Soldier Chief put little bear in prison. Him not friend of Indian. The masked man has given me wisdom, little bear. You are no longer a prisoner. The soldier chief has a paper, a treaty... You read it, little bear. Here it is. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. This say Indians stay in valley. This say soldiers not bother Black Hawk tribe. Yes, that's right. The lieutenant will sign it, then little bear will sign for his father. Ah, me sign. I'll sign it first. Uh, there. Uh, now me put Mark little bear... Yeah, that's good. The Indians are attacking! We must hurry. Lieutenant, I'll go with you and Little Bear under a flag of truce to meet Black Hawk and give him this paper. Hurry before there's much bloodshed. Getting their horses, the Lone Ranger, Lieutenant Nelson, and Little Bear went to the gate. The lieutenant carried a white flag. All right, men, open the gates. As the Indians watched, the three horsemen rode slowly from the fort and down the hill. Blackhawk saw them coming and rode forward to meet with the several of his braves. In a few minutes, the two groups met. Ho, 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 ho. It's good to see, Little Bear. Uh, how, old Chief, my father? Little Bear brings a treaty, Chief Blackhawk. Ah, uh, here, paper. White man word on paper, not good. Soldier chief, try kill Black Hawk. Masked man, trick Black Hawk. No, Black Hawk, I didn't trick you. Masked man speaks the truth, Chief Black Hawk. I alone am to blame. He has given me wisdom. Now I come to you in peace. You take little beaver, make prisoner. Little bear is now free to go back to his people. Black Hawk, not trust soldier chief. White captain who not at fort... Good friend to Indian. Black Hawk, take his word. When Captain Bailey comes back, he will also sign the treaty. I am sure of that. Why, Captain, not here to talk himself? This another trick, maybe. Chief Black Hawk, if you call off your braves, I'll go with you to your village as hostage until Captain Bailey returns. Lieutenant, at last you're showing yourself to be the man I knew you really were. You, me still think trick... Black Hawk, take mass man and soldier chief. Indian, take fort. Bear later! Now, oh, wait a minute. I have this gun pointed at Little Bear's back. Call off the attack. We're really on the spot now. Black Hawk, no mass man, not shoot Little Bear. They give order for Indian to take fort. Leota! Leota! Our plan failed. The fort will be taken. Wait, take listen. It. It's Captain Bailey and his troop. Black Hawk. The white captain has come with troops. Call off your braves. Hula, hula. Here comes the captain. What about this about? Black Hawk, what's the meaning of this? Captain, sir, it's my fault entirely. Your friend, this masked man, showed me my mistake. But it was too late to prevent the attack. I'm glad you're here, my friend. Your Indian friend Tonto told me that you were doing all you could to stop this. I'm glad to see you, Captain Bailey. We gave Chief Black Hawk an agreement, sort of a treaty, but he doesn't trust the lieutenant. If you'll sign the paper, Where perhaps... The paper? Here, paper. Hmm. Why is this necessary? Black Hawk knew that he was safe in the valley. I ordered him out. I'm sorry, but I'll explain everything later, sir. I can have you court-martialed for this, lieutenant. I know, sir. 
I'll sign this treaty, Chief Blackhawk. There. I told him you would, Captain. That good. Captain do as mass man say he would. Blackhawk friend to mass man once more. Me take paper. Me take little bear and braves. We go back to village. Live in peace. Blackhawk has spoken. Make you over. You arrived just in time, Captain Bailey. They're trying to take us prisoners, and we're going to continue the attack on the fort. I know. Lieutenant Nelson? Yes, sir. I was afraid you were too green to leave in command here. But I didn't expect that you were stupid enough to stir up the Indians. You'll be confined to your quarters until Just later. a moment, just a moment, Captain Bailey, please. May I say a word, sir? Of course. Lieutenant Nelson isn't the first officer to be sent west with little knowledge of handling the Indians. I know, but He's then... admitted his mistakes... I'm sure he'll make a fine officer from now on. I'd like to see him get the chance, sir. Sir, I value your judgment of men very highly. If you say so, I guess I can overlook what has happened and give Lieutenant Nelson another chance. Good. Thank you, sir. I won't fail you again. I'll leave now. Adios. Come on, Silver. Come on, Scout. Captain, I owe a great deal to that masked man. You're not the only one, Lieutenant Nelson. In spite of my unmannerly treatment, he believes in me. Would you mind telling me, sir, who he is? He's one of the finest and bravest men in the West, Lieutenant. He's known everywhere as the Lone Ranger. The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated.